little rest of to pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, we glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, because of today. We thank you, Lord, because of great opportunity you give to us. We are here in, with all sober mind. You have spoken to every one of us, O oh Lord, for a reason. But you know us from the womb, and then you do not work condemnation for us. You know where we are coming from, you know where we are going. Lord, we know about heaven. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we have decided that you will take us there in Jesus' name. We are not only praying for ourselves, we are praying for our children. We are praying for all our family. We are praying for all those people who are concerned. You are the God of reconciliation. You will reconcile us with us. We will reconcile us with you in Jesus' name. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, all things that went wrong, Lord, you will make straight in Jesus' name. You have a purpose for bringing us together. To hear the word of the Lord, to preach the word of the Lord, the purpose will not be defeated in Jesus' name. And at the long run, we will continue to have reason to glorify your name. Thank you, O Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. I welcome everyone of us to today's service. And uh, I want to thank everyone of us to continue to bear, to continue to endure. To continue to stay and to continue to ready to obey the word of the Lord. I want to let you know that we are so fortunate in this church. I want to let us know that we are so fortunate, every individual of us that God has brought together. You have shaped my life and I know Without missing of word, either one thing or two things you are gaining from my life. And I pray that by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, all these things will not stay against the will of God for us in Jesus' name. The journey to heaven is very tough. Let us be sincere. And they almost every day are mentioning it on this pulpit. Jesus Christ himself knows that the journey is very, very tough. And the last week, I still want you to hold it. If, if that's the only thing you are going to hold on to, Jesus Christ said, you know, it is a person that talk about lying. And you know that he is holy. And you know that he cannot lie. And you know that although he may speak in parable, he will not misuse word. He not said in that word, he said, you see that rich people, there is nothing they cannot do. When it comes to the drinking, they have money to do. When it comes to enjoying their life, they have money to do it. When it comes to many wives, they have money to have many wives. When it comes to putting on a lot of very expensive clothes that you can see everything about their body, they have money to buy that kind of cloth. But I'm telling you, and this is what I'm telling you. Those people who you are, I'm talking about with you, it will be very difficult for them. It will be easier for a camel. You know that camel cannot enter the hole of a needle. So God is saying automatically that it is not possible for them to go to the kingdom of God. So God, Jesus was not saying it will be very, very difficult for them. It will be easier for camel to enter into to the midst of needle than for them to go to the kingdom of God. And that is the difficulty. That is the problem. But I pray that God is going to help us in Jesus' name. But I have 
a testimony for you. My dear sister, my dear brother in the Lord, I want you to smile. No matter how the message has beaten us today, your Redeemer, leave it. Your Redeemer, leave it. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we wipe away your tears in Jesus' name. Do not forget. We are in the world. And then, Bible let us know. The devil went into Jesus Christ to test him. By the time Jesus Christ was tested, and he was asking him a series of questions. He said, bow down for me. You know, all this world belongs unto me. And if you bow down for me, I will give you all this world. If you bow down for devil, all the joy you think you want, it will give it, but it has taken something. If you bow down for all the necessity you think you want, it will give it, but it therefore has taken something. And Jesus Christ knew this. He now said in his word, You know, it has been written, that shall not bow down for any other God except God. So, my dear brother, my dear sister, in the Lord. No matter what you are looking for, money. No matter what you are looking for, fine woman. No matter what you are looking for, fine man. No matter what you are looking for, popularity. No matter what you are looking for, sufficiency. No matter what you are looking for, peace of mind only Jesus Christ has it not devil and immediately you compromise that let me take this money from devil and let me enjoy my life already it has taken peace of mind and immediately you are alone you say oh I'm alone I need a I need a spouse. I need this. And I, by that time, I will have peace of mind. By the time you allow that one to come in, already it has taken it an easy. And you say, no, I know it's possible. Let me enjoy my life. Let me do this. By the time you started that, oh, is that enjoyment you want? Like it just, let's say, Jesus Christ was feeling hungry. It had been 40 days. Look at that kind of hunger. hunger. And I say, okay, are, are you not Jesus Christ? Are you not me of the devil? Now this world, your father has given it to me. And there's nothing I cannot produce. You come into this world to come and meet me. Let me give you cake. Jesus Christ said, no. If I told anybody is going to feed me, it shouldn't be devil. If I told anybody is going to give you husband, if I told anybody is going to give you wife, if I told anybody is going to give you money, if I told anybody is going to give you clothes, if I tell anybody is going to give you anything you want, it shouldn't be devil. Reject it. Don't compromise. Stay. Wait. The best is awaiting you. And the power and the blood, blood by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you are going to see that best in Jesus' name. It is not difficult for him. The little we are working with him, the little we move near him, that's the little we are saying. And go and ask those people who move near him. Go and ask those people who work with him. By the time you are taking, you have a testimony. By the time you are taking, you enjoy in sin. By the time you are taking, you are satisfied in sin. By the time you are taking, that no one can even know how joyful I am. By the time you go to see those people who have testimony, you will say that you have, you have gone. Because 
he, he has never given you anything without taking something. And the, 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 the essence is this. You are not enjoying the world. You are not, enjoy, you are not going to enjoy the kingdom of God. It all what he always wants is for somebody to stumble. There's nothing good in the devil. My dear brother, my dear sister, I was having I mean, a problem, and then I wish you see my marriage. It's very challenging and then very encouraging. I'm very busting in the Lord. And then we are talking, we are talking, and then you know nothing. You are taking that that's the testimony. If you go and ask that woman, go and ask that man, what is passing through? And then by the time I mention only one, <laughs> I just mention one. But why? It is not, it is not because we want. But it is because God loves us. And why? No, I, I'm not boasting. Because we surrender all to him. And I believe if we can surrender all to the Lord, my dear brother, my dear sister, and the, the Lord, there's a miracle in your mouth in Jesus' name. You know, you will become a testimony that you will say at this particular period, I was thinking. This thing is not possible. Then you will see those. Now you can't call anybody. You see them down. What is your testimony? Was I was talking with her about somebody, and then we are talking about that. I say, okay, what do you want them to say? Is there any testimony in failure? You must say it's not proud. You must say it's not. It's not do this. You must say it's, it's very cool. Huh? You must say it's very gentle. You must say. But there's not, what do you want him to testify about? What do you want her to testify about? There is no testimony in failure. And whatever we call a failure is a failure. Somebody that cannot go to a, 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 a one class, from one class to another, is a failure. Somebody that cannot succeed in one marriage or the other, is a failure. Somebody that cannot do this one thing or the other, is a failure. So you can't see that particular person to be talking to you and be and be, and be proud. And you get what I'm saying? And be proud and be said, this, 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 this. There's no testimony in failure. So if you are not working according to the will of the Lord, there's something wrong. But I want to tell you, once again, I tell you, smile, your Redeemer lives. Do you know the reason why? He said from your womb. You know, I'm only talking about completeness of the word of the Lord. I can't condemn, I'm not condemning. I can't say the, the real, but I, mean, no, I can't say the real things about the word of the Lord without taking talk about the right side of it. Bible let us know your Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives, your Redeemer lives in the name of Jesus Christ. And your, your road is going to be prosper. I want to tell you, He has answered your prayer. And you will be surprised in the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Daniel, chapter 10, the book, so the, the title of my message is Your Miracle. Is at hand. In the book of Daniel, chapter 10. The book of Daniel. The book of Daniel, chapter 10. Thank God. God was telling me there was a reason we went through all this today. And as I was telling you, God understand, and by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, your testimony is full in jesus name god's score is zero i mean devil's score is zero on your destiny if we, do, do you remember the word of the life if i say god's score is zero do you remember what the bible says? the foolishness of god is better than the wisdom of man <laughs> so if god if god's score is zero on my word know that the foolishness of um, god is better than wisdom of man 
So in the book of Daniel, I want to read for all the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. I will read for all 12 to 14. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, from the first day that you did set your heart to understand and to chasten yourself before your God, your word were heard, and I am come for your works. God has come for your answer today in Jesus' name. As you have been thinking about it, as you are wondering about it, as you are bothered about it, the answer is already at your hand. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, if you obey the force of God, you obey the will of God, by the power and the blood, you are going to be surprised in Jesus' name. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I, I remained there with the king of Persia. Look at verse 14. Now I am come to make you understand what shall be for your people in the latter day. For yes, the fiction is for many days. Perilous will not be your own portion in the name of Jesus Christ. You have been going up, you will not go down in the name of Jesus Christ. Go up, me. You have hold on to Jesus Christ. You have, have you have embraced the word of the law. You have embraced holiness, and then there's a there's a there's a there's a way. Now it's look like we are able to go. We will not go down in the name of Jesus Christ. God will bail you out. God will bail me out in the name of Jesus Christ. Then you look at those people that they have been in the kind of that storm. That you are thinking you are in storm. But God says to them, you want to know what a storm is. In the first, in the book of Job, the book of Job, in the book of Job, chapter 1, Job, chapter 1, Job, Job, J-O-B, Job is in storm of life, as you are in storm of life, as I am in storm of life, and it's like God, which way but if job can come out of it my dear brother my dear sister we are going to come out of it in jesus name job chapter one job chapter one 13 to 21 i think the question that will make we going through us is this then i find myself in the rebukon which way out? I've been telling you, you already my really leave it. And you wipe away our tears in Jesus' name. Job 13. Job chapter 1, 13 to 21. I will just read some. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen we are plowing and the asses feeding the beside them. Beside them, and the serpent fell upon them and took them away. Yes, they have killed the serpent with the edge of this world, I, and the, I only am escaped alone to tell the. You will escape to tell the testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Why it was just speaking, there came also in verse 16, also another and say, The fire of God is falling from heaven and has burnt up the sheep and the servant and consumed them. And I only uh, escape alone to tell you. You can see what you passed through financially. You, I, may be handicapped spiritually. You, I, may be handicapped. But there's always be a way of getting out. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God is setting a way for you to get out in Jesus' name. Let's look at the first. Then Job arose and rent his mantle 
and shake his head and fell down upon the ground and worship. Do you know the meaning of worship? By the time you worship God, you surrender to the will of God. And that's what I'm saying. What is that decision? What is that sweet thing? What is that thing that is very only that you think that is greater than worship God? Let it go. And God is going to justify you in Jesus' name. Another storm. Your own, you see that kind of the problem Job was? Your own has not got to that stage. Let's look at the first, uh, uh, let look at the, uh, uh, the first king, 17, verse 12. First king, first king, 17, verse 12. First king, 17, verse 12. First king, 17, verse 12. And she said, as the Lord your God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of me in a barrel, and a little oil in a cru in the cruise. And behold, I'm a gathering two sticks. That I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. Your own situation has not got to that stage. You are the one that just rushed. That if I'm not eating, that's the end of my life. That if I'm not wearing this kind of cloth, that's the end of my life. That if I, if I cannot speak English, that I can never get to the United States. That if I don't have husband, if I don't have wife, that's the end of my life. Who told you? I wish you I speak English to you, then you run away. They call it arrow. Where I was speaking <laughs> English. <laughs> By the time I said wanted, you won't stand before me before you run away. And recently I even went to, to somebody. I, I knew that this man was speaking English and I was confused. <laughs> And, and, then, and then I wish my, my wife my wife was there. And I, I as I was speaking, and I I I, I said went again. And I remember that man, nobody taught him. He changed to Yoruba my language. But the case is this. Look at the, how I'm speaking that English English now. I have confidence in what I'm saying. And then I doubt it. I'm not bragging. But let me brag before God. Let me brag. I doubt it if there's any day in a country that is not even United States, you don't talk about your pastor. That despite all my percent of sorry is sorrow. Despite all my instead of pass away, it's pass out. I mean, instead of pass out, it's pass away. That's why that instead of uh, go, uh, instead of pass of go, instead of uh, I mean, instead of using pass instead of using pass of go, I say went it. That's why that. That's why that. And your situation have never bad to that extent that you will lose hope. The situation of this woman was so bad to the extent that he said, "Can you imagine somebody that have a child?" And he said, "Let us kill my child." I mean, he said, "This is the last meal we will eat." And by the time we eat, your situation has not been bad like that because you grow, you are far away from Bible. You are far away from the word of the Lord. And then another another person that was in the in the storm is in Second Kings chapter two. Second King 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 chapter two twenty eight to twenty nine. Second King chapter two twenty eight to twenty nine. I want you to know, God has a reason. Chapter two, yes. It only has twenty five verses. It only have twenty. I'm coming. Second King. Okay, let's let's check first king. Let's check the first king chapter two twenty-eight to twenty-nine. But I may because of my I may not able to think because I'm so conscious of the time, I may not able to think the way I supposed to think, but I will tell us the story. And there was this woman 
there was a famine in their land to the extent that they have eaten the child of the first one. So the next thing, second, first king, chapter two. Eight, I'm coming. Then tiny came to you for job as strong after Daniel do the uh, Okay, let's not just forget it. I will tell us the story. I know I will remember. Then what what happened there is that okay, we have eaten my own child, bring your own child too, so that we can eat. That was a famine in that land. Can you imagine that? What has happened to you? That has never happened to anybody that you say where is my god what are you passing through what what is that experience you are asking me to the extent that you say no i will take decision on my own and i will take it out of the will of god i want you to i want you to know your redeemer leave it and by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, it's going to rescue you, it's going to rescue me in Jesus' name. Let's look at another storm. That's what your own may be. No, I want to get salvation for my family. I want to get salvation for my wife. I want to get salvation for my husband. I want to get salvation for my husband. And then you may say, like, like John Claus said, give me Scotland or I die. Instead of me of being blessed indirectly, instead of me gaining this one, Almighty oh Father, I be, you better give me my spouse, salvation, or I die. And the will of your mind, God is going to answer it in Jesus' name. You might have suffered a lot, I might have suffered a lot. You might, you might have surrendered whom you are in order for that husband to get the kingdom of God, you must have surrendered whom you are for in order for that wife to get the kingdom of God. My dear brother, my dear sister, God has answered your prayer and that's why the lesson of today come by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will not miss the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. And all your captivity by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God is going to return the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever that is not will of God, let us go back to Calvary. So that God can give you the family. My dear brother, my dear sister, you cannot be under the sin and continue to say the grace of the Lord will continue. And that's why we have stubbornness in a lot of things that is going on in each individual life. Because give me your garments. I know the comment of the kind of garment you put on. You know the comment of the kind of garment I put on. Many times what is going on, thank God that my, my mouth gets loose very well. But many times a lot of things I've experienced, I will find it difficult to I remember me and my brother we talk a lot. But where there's a Christ, there's liberty. God is setting you free. He's setting me free from today in the name of Jesus Christ. And then, so your own may be, give me salvation of my family. Give me salvation of my children. Give me salvation of the... But the Bible is telling you, look at the... The Bible said, when the foundation is 40, what shall the righteous man do us? But do not forget that Bible that said that, is, that that said in the book of Luke one, and said with God, all things are possible. Then your own may be like as I've told us, like like, like Sodom and Gomorrah. There's a lot of things in my family. There's a lot of things I was I was talking, and. Uh, my father and the Lord said, uh, you just continue to do like that. Don't you know that a one, a one 
millionaire in the family of many poor people, he too is poor. So even if you are righteous and you know the will of God, even if you are obeying the will of the Lord, and you are you are still in the midst of this family, even let's say you are rich and you are still among them, I want you to know you are still poor. I say yes, Pastor. And yes, it's not my son in the Lord. That is the truth. And he pray for me. So no matter what the situation, what is wrong, is wrong. But I want you to know, my dear brother, my dear sister, my dear wife, my dear, uh, my dear children, all of you, my friend, I have no any other family before you than you. Remember, you are not here. Who is going to be here? Remember, you are not teaching this kind of the message. The, this, the, person, the brother we brought forward thought today, who, how are we going to come across this? How will I remember this? What my family is going on? Remember a lot of things I passed through, I've discussed with you. How will my family stand? If you can build my family, I want to build your family. Go back to cover. Like Sodom and Gomorrah, your own case may be like Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. And God was saying, I'm going to destroy this city. And Abraham was so concerned that you can't destroy me. You can't destroy this city. You can't destroy my family. Not is there. You can't destroy it. I mean, my cousin. But why God, if I find this many people, but God is going to start for you, He's going to start for me in the name of Jesus Christ. It's going to start from you and you are the part of the people god is looking on to and then god himself you may be like even god and then in, in himself god was so worried and then he was like i will destroy these people again like the way the day i did it in the time of god in the time of noah and jesus was so bad i said no if that be the case let me go and sacrifice myself Whatever is going to cause you to sacrifice the salvation of other, God will give you the grace in the name of Jesus Christ. The time has come. There's nothing too big. There's no relationship. There's no beginning. There's no end. God does not know. For every situation we find ourselves, God knows about it. And I know if you are ready to bear that cause, God is ready to, to, to solve the cause for you in Jesus' name. The promises of the Lord. In answering prayer. I've been telling us, including me, that we should go back to Calvary. In Daniel 10, chapter 12, the Bible was telling us, Daniel 10, chapter 12, Daniel 10, chapter 12. Daniel 10. My dear brother, my dear sister, you know one thing. Sometimes when you are praying, you don't know how God wants to answer that, question, answer that prayer. You, you may be saying that this is what I want, this is what I want. And God will say, okay, this is what you want. And this is how I will provide it for you. But you are going to get it in Jesus' name. But this is the way that going to, you are going to get it. You might have been praying for that particular thing. God is answering your prayer today in Jesus' name. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. That said he unto me, fear not. So, my dear brother, my dear sister, do not fear of whatever it may be going on in your mind. Do not fear of whatever situation you may find yourself. The God has brought the answer, and by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, you cannot solve that problem with the Lord. We woman be may say no, then God say yes. We women may say yes and God say no. The only thing I'm just telling you is this. Whatever that is wrong, is wrong. Whatever that is right, is right. And if there's any wrong in our life, let's go back to the Lord. And Bible said, that said on ye unto him, fear not, darling. For from the first day that you did set your heart to understand and to chasten yourself before your God, your word was hard, and I am come for your word. So from the first day you have been thinking, you have been bothering. You have been considering that this step I decided to take in order in order to go to school instead of serving God, in order to in, in, in order to sacrifice this, instead of doing this, that step 
have you have been thinking and you don't want to sacrifice you don't want to sacrifice your degree in order to serve God God said today I'm here to answer your prayer and God is answering your prayer in the name of Jesus Christ in the book of second chronicle second chronicle second chronicle Second Chronicle. Second Chronicle. Second Chronicle. Second Chronicle. Second Chronicle. Second Chronicle is after King. Second Chronicle is and after First King. Second Chronicle. Chapter seven, verse fourteen. Chapter seven. Verse 14. Chapter 7, verse 14. Look at what the Bible says. Chapter 7, verse 14. And the Bible says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked way, then I will hear from heaven. So if you can listen to the word of the Lord, if you can obey the word of the Lord. If you can just kneel down before God, that's this way I've been coming from. This way I am. All what I need is your guardians. God guide me through, and see me through. And you humble yourself. You come with the husband and wife. We come together. We pray together. If it is only us, only you, you come together. You pray together. And do not forget, if it is us, husband and wife, if it's so better for two of you, for me and my wife, to come back, to come together. Why? The Bible says, one shall send one thousand. Why the two shall send two thousand? I mean, ten thousand away. So that if two of you can come together and agree together and say, this is what we want, this is what we want, God, ready. You are going to, the enemy is conquered in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible make it clear if all of us can humble ourselves and we come together, the problem is solved, and by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, is being solved in Jesus' name. In the book of Second Chronicle, I mean Jeremiah twenty nine twelve. Jeremiah 29 Jeff. and see another promise to let you know that God is with you almighty God is with you and by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ is going to see every one of us through in Jesus what did I tie to my message your answer is already at hand Jeremiah the book of Jeremiah 29 12 Jeremiah 29 12 please before I forget there's a, there's a messages my wife send out for those people who are going for conversion please register because instruction from the church is that we must register in the service please so in the, in the book of Jeremiah 29 12 Jeremiah 29 12 then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet the prophet after that Analiah the prophet had broken the yoke from off the leg of the prophet Jeremiah saying Go and tell Anna, saying, Thus say the Lord, you are broken the yoke of wood, but you shall make for them yoke of iron. But for you, by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, your yoke is being broken in Jesus' name. And the problem is solved by the power in the blood of Jesus. Then the word that the Lord came out to Jeremiah the prophet. After that, Analia the prophet had broken the yoke from all the neck of the of the all the neck of the of the prophet your yoke is being broken in jesus name look at the book of mark 11 24 mark 11 24 mark 11 24 mark 11 and see what the bible say about pray i mean pray requesting and being answer 11 i mean 11 24 Book of Mark 11, 24. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Therefore I say unto you, 
whatsoever you desire. So if all of us desire it, if, if all of us agree with it, if all of us say that's what they, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them in Jesus' name. You have that all those things in the name of Jesus. Because of our time, I will quickly go to the, sec- the second one. The prohibitive object to answer prayer. What are those things that stop that causing a stubborn block? One of them is the devil himself doesn't want us to succeed. And the devil know that Almighty God does not love sin. So what if we God devil always do is this to bring sin before us. So that whenever we are committing that sin, we go, we are, we are, I mean, our destiny go astray. So that's what happened in the, in the, in the, in the book of Daniel, chapter 10, verse 13. Book of Daniel, chapter 10, verse 13. God has already wanted to, I mean, God has already wanted to, I mean, the, the prayer has even been answered. But what happened? Persia, I mean, the, 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 the Persia hold on the prayer. He does not let the uh, the, the prayer be answered. What is our own pressure of this period? It is sin. And immediately we are holding that sin, that means our prayer will not be answered. But by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, God is setting us free from the all yoke in the name of Jesus Christ. Daniel 10, 13. Daniel 10, verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, we stood me, one and twenty days, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. By the power and the blood of the king of Persia, God is removing from your from your front from your front from your back today in Jesus' name. And God is setting it free in Jesus' name. It's just a matter of prayer. Then I will not be able to go to that one. All that, all that, all that things that is disturbing us from our prayer being answered. All of them, it, it uh, they are in the first Peter chap, uh, chapter three. In the chapter three, in first twelve, we will see wrong relation with God. When there is a wrong relation with God, our prayer will not be answered. In in, in the first Peter chapter three, one, when we have a wrong relation with other woman being. Wrong relation with other human beings. Our prayer will not be answered. In First Peter chapter 3, 3 to 4, when we are in worldly dressing, attracting, let other people fall, causing other people to fall, either we are women or men, our prayer will not be answered. In, in, in First Peter chapter 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 4, if we are in proud, like in book of James chapter 4, verse 10, we are so proud. Our prayer will not be answered. In, in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, if we are with unclean clip, our prayer will not be answered. In the 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 16, a bad conscience. We are before Almighty God. We are, we are, we are praying. We are, but our conscience is not clear. Our prayer will, our prayer will not be answered. Then, if we do not have children, uh, Christian love, our prayer will not be. You can see the reason why many of us we are stagnant. We put ourselves in the problem God does not prove us. We cause a lot of interests, to, uh, interests God has not causing to us. We cause a lot of problems to what we have not. God is not the plan of God for us. But I want you to know, as I'm saying, your Redeemer lives. That one let me go to the last one. The possessiveness of relying upon God. As we are living here, my dear brother, my dear sister, including me, as we are depending upon God, in book of Daniel chapter 10, verse 14. Daniel chapter 10, verse 14. Daniel chapter 10, verse 14. Now I am come to make you understand what shall befall your people in the latter day, for yet the fishing is for many days. Goodness is before you or in the name of Jesus Christ. Righteousness is before you in the name of Jesus Christ. By the time of you, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, your relationship will yield fruitfulness. My relationship with my wife, your relationship with your wife, your relationship with your children will be will yield fruitfulness. Will be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God will wipe away your tears. 
By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God will carry your load for you. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God will set you free. God will set me free. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, the Bible says the latter rain is better than the beginning. I want to tell you once again, love. That's a joy. God has a purpose for you. God has a reason for you. You cannot tell me that from the day you were born, or from the day you start a plan, or from the day you are started working, or the day you started executing that plan, God does not know. He knows. But he has come. And tell you and tell me that the time has come. I've let you matured. I've let you see. And then I want to use it for another glory. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will not resist it in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 13. There is nothing that is happening to you. There is nothing you are passing through. There is nothing that has happened to you. That has never happened to anybody else. It is just the way they hold it. First Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 13. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. That's for, is it First Corinthians chapter ten, verse thirteen. Verse thirteen. There is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. God know the plan of devil. And he know, he know what he wants to do for us. And he knows that this is what he can do. And as a result of the, he, that God has put limitation to the whatever Satan can do. So there is no temptation. There is nothing you pass through. There is nothing. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Today is that day. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, testimony is ours in Jesus' name. But we, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. John 16 33. The book of John 16 33. The book of John 16 33. The book of John 16. 33. The book of John 16 33. This thing I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be good chase. I have come and I have overcome the world. So God have overcome the world for you in Jesus' name. Just be cheerful. He knows everything. He knows where you are coming from. He knows where you are. Exodus 14, verse 16. That's the last verse we are going to read. Exodus, Exodus 14, 16. You will now call upon the name of the Lord. You will stretch your sword. And you will talk to the Lord. All what I've said. As I'm speaking my own, God is speaking to your own heart. And God, and then you know what God is speaking to you. And you know the right thing to do. And this is what Moses did in chapter 14, verse 16. Chapter 14, but you lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. You will divide that problem within you and God today in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us rise up and call upon the name of the Lord. Stretch your sword. Stretch your sword. Your sword is your prayer. Your sword, is your, the mighty sword, is that prayer. Call upon the name of the Lord. 
the father you know i've done everything according to who i am but today i've learned from the uh, from the life of ruth i've learned from the life of naomi and we have heard about the message my redeemer live it my testimony is a, is a time my prayer is being answered call upon the name of the lord Is it education? Why can't you call upon him? Do not sacrifice for, do not sacrifice your life for education for for for, for just ordinary uh, cardboard. Is it money? Why do you want to sacrifice your life for paper? Is it emotional? I feel forgotten. He's the one that look at that Adam need help. And he provided he provided that help. What is that thing? That is a big stick. Present it before God. He knows the best. Your pastor may not know the best. But, but your pastor may know the word of the Lord. Do not forget the word the Bible says. It's for direction. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. Stretch your sword. Your prayer is your sword. About the power and the blood of Jesus, nobody in my family, nobody in your family, devil will cheat again in Jesus' name. And all things. Any question? Why can't you sit me down? Anything that bother you? Why can't you sit me down? Let's go to the word of the Lord together. If it is not clear, if it is not something I can undo, why can't we call our leader? And then if there is anything that looks like we want to be hiding, there is something there. But one thing I want to tell you, the Bible says, all of us, we are children of the Bible. We have been in this church for more than a year, for more than six months. We cannot see somebody down and say this is what the Bible says. The Bible now says, who is that person that we start? That particular thing, and look back. My dear brother, my dear sister, is it because of the situation we want to look back? No. He knows the best. Go on to see him. You and your husband. You and your wife. Come together. Lean down before God. You and that you and that woman, you and that sister, you're thinking is the best for you. Yes, if it is the will of God, it's the best. But come together, lean down together. God wants to use you. God wants you to want to use it to build families. In our marriage, whereby there's no joy. Let's pray together. Let's lean down together. That was the causes. There's nothing to sacrifice. I mean, too, I mean, too big to sacrifice for kingdom of God. Bury your pride. Be humble. Obey the word of the Lord. Ask for grace. He asked reason for everything. He asked reason for let you know me. He asked reason for let me know you. See how you are helping our Christian journey. See how, us, how I have helped your Christian journey. He knows the reason why he has brought us together. And he can still do more than this. Come together. 
pray together. God will tell you the best solution. You can do it. It will wipe away your tear. I mean, your shoe. I know the shoe you are. I know how difficult it is. I know how difficult it is, my dear sister, my dear brother. I know how heavy it is. But by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, do not run away for the word of the Lord. Do not go away. Look at the almighty thing God has put into your hand. Look at the family you have saved. Look at the families you have helped. Your conscience may not be settled, but God knows your conscience more than yourself. You set everything before God. For all those people, God is opening our eyes. Do not be resistant to the word of the Lord. The Bible says the judgment we start, we start from the house of the Lord. For those people who know how to do good and do not do it, who want to them? I want you to tell you, your Redeemer is living. It's setting you free. It's setting me free. The grace of the Lord is sufficient for you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Call the family together. That's when I want to come together. Pray individually. Pray in your clay. Clear all mind. And let God take over. And the power and the blood of Jesus Christ will not bite finger in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Pray as you want. The service is over.